Hi, I'm back again. Um, I got some positive response from doing these little videos online, so I'm going to give it a shot. If you like them, please, please let me know. I am all about the positive reinforcement, and if you don't, email me privately, because we try to keep the blog a happy place, and no nasty comments, and I mean, I'm all for br brutal honesty. I'm 100% for that. Um, so please let me know via email. My email is erinlincoln at hotmail.com. And if you have good things you'd like to tell me, post them on my blog and tell your friends, and maybe we'll continue doing this. So today, um, we're, we're still sick. The Lincolns are still very feeling under the weather with some nasty cruddy bug. But what I want to talk to about today is critical that I talk about today, because today is significant to this little album I'm going to be talking about, The Last Day of the Year. Um, let me give you a little background story. Um, Matt and I started dating when I was in high school, and... All through college, we were either um, about an hour to two, and two hours away, and this was before email was really big. And so a lot of our correspondence was with letters. I would sit in calculus class when I was bored and write him letters, and he probably didn't write me as quite as frequently as I wrote him, but I got lots of letters in response, and I would I have like a little keepsake box that I kept everything that was important to our relationship, little doodads and tickets and trinkets and, you know, all that stuff. Um, so about six years ago, on December 31st, 1999, Matt and I went to see a movie, went to see uh, The Townsend Mr. Ripley, and on our way home, you know, he was, he was kind of mm, pushing my buttons a little bit about uh, where our future was going. We had been dating for four years. I had we have company in the form of Tagalong. We're going to shoo him off. Yeah, come on. Tagalong. <laughs> I'm being upstaged by the cat. Thanks, Tag. Come on. Come on. We know you like to be the star of the show, but you, you have to skedaddle. Come on, Taggy. Come on. Come on. All right. There was Tag. One of the three cats. So we were driving back to my folks' place on New Year's Eve, and he was give me a hard time about where we were going and so on and so forth and he's a big tease but yet I still wasn't catching on to anything got to my parents house he uh, rushed in the house I'm like what is going on and I followed and he told me he had a little New Year's Eve silly for me I was like okay whatever he uh, ran over to my parents hutch and snagged this little binder out of there which I thought was a little odd um, made me sit down on the living room couch, and my my mom and my sister and my dad were all poking through the, the doorway, um, looking all excited, and I, I had no idea what was going on. So I was handed this little scrapbook. Now this, this tells you that Matt had a great deal of insight into me, because I had really only started scrapping for a week. I had maybe done one or two pages. It was something I was having fun with, not something I thought would stick. And yet, he gave me this little purple scrapbook. It says, Cuddlebug on the front. I, I'm, I don't quite know what that means. He's probably being cute. It's all glittery, and it's in his, his handwriting. And when we open it up, we see um, a picture of him and a picture of me when we were little. Turn the pages. Now, this is really funny. This is a picture of Matt and his ex-girlfriend at prom. Um, and a picture of me superimposed over Laura. It's, it's pretty funny. Now, Laura used to be my best friend, and she was dating Matt, and it's a whole sort of affair with that, but over and done with. I got the guy, happy with him. I was actually in Matt's dad's room the other night, putting the baby down to sleep. I had noticed that this prom picture of Matt and Laura was still up on the wall, so we might have to sneak over there and change it with something that has me in it, because I've been around for 11 years, and... I think I got the guy at this point. This page has a cover of one of my romance novels, and he was basically making fun of the fact I read them. I read a lot of things, but that's just one of the things. Turn the pages. Um, at this point, I'm starting to get a little suspicious. I see a couple of these little puzzles that I had sent him, and that he had to decipher. They're quite comical now, and to be honest, I have a hard time figuring out what they say. I knew at the time, but now I have no idea. Turning the page. Now, this point in the whole ordeal, with my parents looking on and Matt next to me, 
I'm beginning to think something is up. It's obvious to me that the boy has been in my underwear drawer. Now, I don't know about you, but everything that is holy and sacred goes in my underwear drawer. This could be letters to receipts to passports. I mean, everything important in the underwear drawer. I don't know why I do this, and I know all the girls in my family do this. It's just what we do. And I'm getting a little, I, I'm getting a little cheesed off because the boy was in my underwear drawer, and I, I, I don't remember. I, I think I was thinking, oh God, what did he find? What else was in the underwear drawer that maybe I didn't want him to see? And so, I'm thinking this little scrapbook is all cute and sweet and all, but I'm getting a little ticked because he was rifling around with my stuff. So we just keep going. These are um, excerpts from letters that we had written back and forth, and you can notice the great technique, the paper pizzazz paper, the uh, glittery stickers. I mean, he was, he was ahead of his time, Matt Lincoln. Keep going. Now, uh, here I notice he... Uh, he managed to get a scrap of my prom dress, a scrap of a, another dress I wore to a different wedding, the garter I wore to uh, prom, his cufflinks from prom, and I don't know, I think this is a little weird, but still, still, I have not caught on to what's going on. So you turn the page, more lovely paper pizzazz paper, and there is this little fortune, and I'll tell you about this fortune in a little bit, where he got it, but it says you are entering a new and rewarding period in your love life. Okay, and a big arrow pointing that way. Now, I am still clueless. I have no idea what's going on. None. Absolutely no idea. You turn the page, and there, tied up with this ribbon, was my engagement ring. And he got down on one knee and asked me to marry him with my parents looking on and my little sister taking photos and... Uh, I, I just, I just lost it. Started crying, was bawling. He, he had asked me twice to get me to say something, and the answer was, of course. Um, and over here, we actually have the photos of when he asked me. I'll post, I'll try to rifle those up and post those online so you can see them. And um, some congratulations cards, because some of our friends were in on it, and they knew what was happening. So we went to our New Year's Eve party and walked into applause and letters and champagne and it was just a lot of fun. So this little album is nothing you're ever going to see in the pages of CK. doesn't have the latest and greatest techniques, the latest and greatest paper, but it's probably the one that is dearest to my heart. And I would probably give up every single other little scrapbook if I could keep this one. And so let that just be a lesson and a lesson to me too that it's really the meaning behind something and the thought that goes into it that's important. And all the other stuff is just extra stuff to weigh you down or get concerned with. And if you put your heart into it and you, uh, you really put some meaning behind it, that's what's going to really be important in the long run. So I just wanted to share that today. Six years ago today I got this. And uh, I just love it. So there you go. I'm going to go find a good place for it because I'm cleaning out the whole scrap area. So have a nice New Year's Eve. I hope you're all safe and hope you have lots of inspiration in the next year. I'll talk to you later. Bye.